Okay, so this board looks like uh, one of the pads is either missing or someone's played with it and pulled one of the pads on the um, FB36. Uh, I'll just um, start the putty capture and we'll give it a boot and show you what it's doing. Yeah, so as you can see, that's failing to boot. All right, let's pull the battery out. I'm going to tag in on the uh, FB36, but what I need to do is I need to draw power from somewhere else. So I'll just go up to the JTAG, pin one of the JTAG, um, and that should be fine. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit of flux on both those spots, just because it helps with the soldering process just kind of helps uh, heat distribute around uh, which means you don't need to apply as much heat to get the same sort of effect right oh. let's get in so the red wire which goes out to my probe, we're going to put on that right hand pin which is the only remaining pin which is probably a good thing just need to yep get that to stick and then we're going to come up to the J tag and pop the green one onto pin one that might actually need a bit of solder, no that's, that's alright, that's stuck on there right so at this point we're good to go We've got our, uh, our power source and the power out. Um, the probe, which you can't actually see, is, is connected up to that, that secondary wire that I always have. This guy here, it's always hanging off the second side of that. So this one goes to the SD card, this one goes to the probe. The green is pulling power off the JTAG. I'm sure you know by now what we need to do from here. And that is, insert the battery first, which I always forget to do. <laughs> you get that in the big jobs. I'm going to short the probe out on the left hand side of that pin. Press the power button and there we go. That's now booting off the SD card off that second board I've plugged in. And as I've said before, I always hold it on there until it gets to the login screen. You don't need to. According to the Texas Instruments data sheet, uh, it only needs to be, you only need to set the pin high um, at startup or a uh, restart of the CPU. But I just do it anyway. Righto. Um, it, ooh, let's keep that under there. I'm at the login screen, so I'll log in as root. Okay, now I need my trusty... Uh, who's first? This guy, so the instmod uh, runs a script which uh, enables me to write to uh, all the different uh, partitions. It sets them writable. Um, some of them are already writable, as you'll see. Um, but yeah, it's that primary uh, zero uh, partition that we're going to work with so we need to uh, make sure that we set the one writable otherwise the whole process won't work the next thing we want to do is we want to back up uh, the existing partition it's just good practice and that's almost done second now and there we go so now what we need to do is we need to erase uh, whatever is in um, that partition in the NAND for the uh, bootloader uh, and it's referred to as MTD0 so I'll erase that that's a really quick process 
The next thing we want to do is we just want to write in uh, the bootloader for it. Uh, once again, the bootloader is just a generic uh, boot um, which you then you know load things like uh, your kernel uh, and other things on top of. So the kernel has got you know it's the thing that's really doing the job. The bootloader's job is just to uh, boot something up. It's it's quite generic. Uh, it boots up and then you load everything on top of that. It's quite different to Windows. So let's uh, just write that out. And as we can see, that data's writing out successfully. There's no issues. And so that's good to go. Righto. So let's uh, pop the battery. We will uh, disconnect those wires that I've tagged in. We'll disconnect the other board uh, and we'll get it to boot up. Uh, uh, this board has actually come from someone who sent me pretty much just the board. Just going to be careful of those wires there, make sure you don't do any damage to them. Right, so I can remove my probe wires. We can uh, get rid of this guy. Plug in the original, you need to be careful with these, they, they really need to be sitting in properly. Um, you'll notice it's got like a, a little piece on each end, where's that probe? It's got like a little, little tab on each side, those tabs need to be in the slot. If it's, if it's not sitting in straight, if it's sitting like that, then you're potentially going to short out pins and that's going to wreck your board. So when you look at that, you can see you can see that this tab is sitting in its slot and this tab is sitting in its slot so it's good to go. You also need to remember to glue these back down. Um, those clips um, aren't too bad but they're not the best thing in town. They uh, just need a little bit of something. You know if you have a heavy landing one of those pops open you're gonna have a bad day. For some reason there's a stack of others that uh, aren't connected including uh, you might be able to see it, but the gimbal connection is not plugged in, so let's get that in. I don't have a gimbal in it at the moment, but this is kind of a fairly straightforward job. This is the one you really need to be careful of. If this one's crooked, you know, you're going to cross all sorts of pins. So that one's back in. Uh, let's throw the one that goes down to uh, all our comms boards in. So that is in nice and straight. Uh, and then we just have this one guy down the back here. Sometimes it's not it's best not to ask. <laughs> Got a job done, I'll do it. Righto, so. All those clips are back in. Let's uh, plug the battery back in and uh, give that a boot. And as you can see, that's booting up fine. A little complaint about a few things. Um, if we were plugged into the other processor, uh, we would see that um, it's actually complaining about um, things like the gimbal isn't there. It wouldn't surprise me if this board actually goes into shutdown mode. Um, yeah, but it's probably complaining there's no gimbal, the arms aren't extended, a whole stack of things. But, where is a controller? We can probably get it to pair, even though it's kind of got limited uh, stuff on it. Let's have a try. It's got my trusty controller booting up. Let's see if we can't get this light to go green, eh? Although we'll probably need to disconnect the battery uh, so that we can actually pair it. Yeah, 
let's shut this guy down. Let's start him up in pairing mode. As you can see, it's booting again. It's love and life. Righto, blue flashing light, pairing mode. Uh, made it to the login screen. Let's hit pair on the uh, controller. Righto, solid blue light. When you get a solid blue light, you press the power button. Flashing green means it's paired. Pairing successful. Controller says pairing successful. Uh, there's no use me trying to go any further than that because there's parts missing, arms aren't extended, you know, there's no gimbal in this thing. But, you know, as you can see, it's paired. Powering off. Righto, I always forgot to mention the most important bit. Make sure that uh, after you've done what you've done, that you clean up any extra flux that you added to the board. There's a whole stack of different circuit board cleaners that are available on the market. <coughs> and uh, one of their primary jobs is to clean up flux. So as you can see that's looking like new. All that flux we added to get that heat where we wanted has been removed and uh, yeah it's nice and shiny again. 